Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Greider here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the centric bearing generator. Um, basically, this is going to help you to uh, create a device that incorporates a uh, centric bearing device um, that will allow you to uh, determine two things. One is a centric relation, at allo allowing the, the patient to slide forward to protrude and go to excursive movements and figure out where all those center and at that point that is centric relation. Now there's lots of videos online where you can see or you know what written tutorials as well where you can learn more about that process. This video is going to focus more on the how to create this device. So it determines centric relation but also by having a threaded screw it allows us to open the bite the video vertical dimension of occlusion. So we're going to determine two things, CR and VDO, with this device. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make one that you can print. All components you will print uh, in your 3D printer. Okay, so when you download it, you're going to get this folder right here. It's going to call this the Centric Bearing Generator Files. It's a zipped folder. You can see the little zipper right here. If you double click on it, this is everything that's in it. Now, I do suggest that you uh, right click on it and click Extract All so that all the files are uh, natively on your computer as opposed to in the zipped folder. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have these files right here. And to, to run this, we actually want to click on the generator file. Okay, this is a .mix file. It is the file format that MeshMixer uses. Uh, so you're going to need to use MeshMixer for this. Uh, you can use other software, but you'll lose some of the functionality, such as pivots and whatnot. Okay, so if I double click on this right here, it's going to open up Mesh Mixer. And it, um, I'm going to ignore this little guy right here. And so here it is, and here's all the little parts and pieces. Uh, we're going to duplicate some of these things, we're going to hide some of these things, but these are the parts and pieces that you need to get started. Now I'm going to show you by bringing in this uh, lower record base and this sample record base and upper try in. Okay, I'll bring these in here, I'll show you what they look like. I just clicked append, so that means we're adding it to the list as opposed to replacing everything that's in here. Now, um, it may look like these are already all set up. They're actually not. Um, they're just pretty close. So, um, but the thing is, is um, technically the idea is that you just, I just drag these in. Drag them in from uh, whatever scanner uh, created them. They might not be in occlusion, they might be, um, but uh, it doesn't matter. As you'll see, it does not matter at all if they are uh, correctly aligned or not. So over here, if you're not real familiar with the uh, Mesh Mixer, is the Object Browser. If it ever goes away, you can come up to View, click on Show Objects Browser, and there it is. I'm going to make it a little bit wider so I can see things a little better. And I'm going to turn off, I'm going to click the little eyeball next to these initial things. I just want to hide some things. These little spheres down here, these are called pivots. They're not actually objects. They allow us to rotate things instead of about the center of the object, about the pivot. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But if you're not familiar with those, right down here, you might never have noticed, this little guy right here allows us to see the pivots listed as well. So we can hide those. So I don't want those shown right now. I want to see them listed, but I don't want anything else visible. I just want to look at these for a minute. So let's talk about what these are. First of all, um, Dr. Corey Glenn created these um, to give an example of how to use this device, basically the first version that I had generated. And um, so what he did is he used Blue Sky Plan to create an upper denture with a setup of teeth based on anatomic landmarks and just an average. The idea being you could print this um, it's probably going to be pretty close to spot on for the upper. Um, anything you need to change, you can mark the midline, you can grind teeth to kind of change the bite, whatnot. But it gives you a starting point because we're going to end up using this inside as our custom tray, border mold, whatnot. Probably going to trim off this, you know, the, the overextension on the border with a handpiece or whatnot first. But anyway, this is functions as a custom tray and a try in all in one. And this lower. Is, it, is our custom tray as well. We're going to border mold and use this for uh, our impression tray. But we don't have any lower teeth because we're, he purely guessed on the upper teeth and there's no way to guess the VDO, to guess how far the lower arch is away from it and where it lines up. So we're not going to bother messing with that. Instead, we're going to use this um, centric bearing device to do a gothic tracing and to determine our VDO. Okay, so... Um, Anyway, let's, let me do something right quick. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move these. I hit the T button, which is transform, 
and I'm just going to get them completely out of whack, okay? Um, and so that's over here, and this is, I'm, again, I'm just arbitrarily moving these just so we can sort of think about um, them as though we scan them some, with some scanner and we've now dragged and dropped these files in here. Okay, so now let's turn on things and let's turn on the platform in particular. Okay, so what I want to do is, and it helped me kind of visualize, I don't know, this just helps me to see up and down the, the bolt. I'm just showing it for, again, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to press the T button or you can come over to edit and, um, geez, I never look from here. Where is transform? I'm so used to just pressing T. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I'm not seeing it. Anyway, oh, good grief, <laughs> right there. If you press T on your keyboard, it'll, uh, it's a shortcut. Well, I've not looked for that in years. Okay, now I'm just gonna slide this down and I'm just kind of bringing it close. The little arrow allows me to move in two directions. And I'm just, I don't want the, um, the platform to touch the model. I just want it to be close. Um, and that looks about right. There's a decent space all around. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I can rotate the, the, um, this as well if I want. Not real critical there, but I can do that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and say okay. And now I'm, I want to determine how am I going to attach this to this. How, what I, so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to use this as a, an impression tray, a record base, and I also want to be able to lock this into here when I want to so that I can now do, you know, do the rest of it. So how I'm going to do that is I've got these little horizontal and vertical mounts. Now you can use just one of them. You need three at least, but you can use the same design this whole, for all, of, all three mounts. You could use this for all three. just depends on how it's set up. If you have teeth on here because you're actually using a, a duplicate set of dentures, then you're probably going to want to use this horizontal. Um, the vertical is a little bit easier, but the horizontal is more flexible, if you will. So one thing that's important is the pivots. If you notice, the pivots in here are hidden right inside of the sphere of these. That's very important because that's going to allow us to rock these little arms up and down, keeping them still nestled within this uh, device. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the horizontal, but I need to click on the horizontal mount and the pivot, okay? I'm gonna duplicate that. And now I'm gonna hit the T button so I can transform that duplicate set. And I'm just going to bring it back here to the back left. Get this center, this circle sort of lined up here. And now I can just rotate it. Okay. And now I'm going to drop it down because I want this part to be embedded within here. You'll see that it's sticking out on the inside. That's okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. And this is embedded in here, so we're pretty good right now. Uh, I like to have this as close to the model as possible because that means I'm going to be removing this piece when I get the impression and this way the tongue doesn't get obstructed because it's sitting over here on the side. You'll see that in a minute as well. So I want to get rid of that part in here. So all I do is I come into the edit, I hit plain cut. Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't have both things. The pivot can't be selected. I just need to have this object selected. Edit, plain cut and just dr click and drag a line. Right now it wants to discard this part, that's why it's clear, and leave this. So I'm gonna click this big blue arrow, and now it's the opposite, and hit accept. So now there's nothing s sticking inside there. If you wanna know what, what that has done, um, you can see that it just cut off a piece right there. Okay, so now that's all set. I can go ahead and um, copy these two Duplicate, transform, and swing this one over here. And now we'll rotate. Now, the fact that I cut it is actually going to be a problem because now I can't use this because it's cut the wrong direction. That's okay. If, you, if I had waited to delete it, to cut it, it, it would have worked. But in the sense I didn't, 
I'm just going to say uh, escape and I'm going to delete those two pieces. And so I've still got my, my uh, generic ones up here, these two. Uh, I say these two, meaning the horizontal mount and the pivot. I'll just, once again, copy them. T to transform, grab the little green triangle, swing it back here, and rotate it into position. I like to have this little cannon looking thing pointed right at the hole. Why? I can't really say. That's just the way I sort of designed it to work. Um, anyway, uh, it just seems to be the best setup for me. Okay, you can see that I'm getting it kind of close to here, trying to really get the, the sphere holder guy right down close to the... Um, close to the record base. This thing's still embedded within there, so we're good. All right. And now I want to clip off this little part that's underneath here. So once again, I've selected this guy. Click Edit, Plane Cut. It's already deleting the right, the right side and keeping the good side, so I don't need to put the, green, the blue triangle. And OK. So that's all trimmed. Now lastly, let's go ahead and bring in, this time let's use the, the vertical one. We could use the horizontal, but just to show you how this one works as well, hit the vertical mount and the vertical pivot. They, they are tied together. We're going to duplicate that. And now I'm going to hit transform and move it up to where I want it right in the center. Okay? It is well centered. Ver oops, sorry, vertically. What's out here? Oh, that's the upper model. I'm going to hide this because that's kind of distracting. Now, since I did that, I unselected these two. T, let's transform. Let's embed this well within the, the record base. Now, one thing that's important is you see this is sticking out top of it. That honestly won't matter. That's not going to matter at all, but I don't want it to be too high. Okay, If it's too high, I might choose to move this platform up higher. It can be much higher than these, but it, um, it should not be lower than these. So there, we're good though. It's well embedded. And click OK. So now everything is, is is embedded with each other. It's all good to go. Now let's pretend for a moment that this platform was much higher. For whatever reason, it had to be. Let's let's move the platform and the um, let's move the platform and the uh, pin up higher, just to show you kind of uh, or the bolt as I have it called here. Let's say we had this up here for whatever reason, okay? If that was the case, that's where these pivots come into play. Now, you're not going to need it on most cases, but I wanted you to have the ability to uh, adjust the angulation of these. So if I look right here, it has a pivot right by it. They're associated together. So if I click on this, hit S to select and double click on it, okay? Now just this part separated. I'm going to hit Y. Y is the same thing as Edit Separate. It's made this little part a separate uh, entity, a separate uh, object. If I now press um, T to transform, you'll see that it wants to rotate about its center. That's not good. I don't want to do that. If I click on the pivot right here, if you see that really, it's hard to see. If I click right here. Now I can rotate it about the pivot and it stays embedded in here. Okay? And click OK. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one. Oops, I need to separate it first. Y. Now I can hit T to transform, click on the pivot, rock it up. So you see, it's really not that difficult to do this. I, if it sounds confusing, I do apologize, but I'm going to walk through one more time. What I'm doing is right now, these two pieces are, this, the software thinks these are linked. So I click on S to select. If I double click here, it highlights this entire portion of it. I hit Y and it separates it. It adds it down here to my, my object list, that bottom piece. And I want to rotate that, so I click on that, but click on the pivot, and now I can rock it up. And the little arm is embedded within the platform. 
So again, in most cases, you will not need to do this. Most of them, you'll be able to get this nestled in there, and they'll just be straight out, and you'll be done in 30 seconds. But I want you to have the ability to account for complex cases where you need to angle those up and down. Okay? So now, the nice thing is, is we need to separate those from the mounts anyways. And let me sh show you why. I'm, first, I'm going to hide these objects. Because I don't need them in there. Because now, and also let's, let me hide the, um, the bolt. I want to print this and these objects together. Okay? So to do that, I'm going to click on them. I'm holding the control button on my keyboard, and I'm selecting all of them. Oh, not the pivot. In fact, we can hide the pivots. We don't need those anymore. So they've got the horizontal mount, the vertical mount, the horizontal mount, all the ones that are visible. Oh, not that one. So let's, sorry for just a second. All right, so I want that. Let's, let's hide everything we don't want. Let's hide the platform. Let's hide this. Let's hide that. Let's hide this. Okay, so the only thing that's left, and obviously the pivots, we don't need any of them visible because we're not using those anymore. So the only things that are checked right now that are visible are, is the, the platform or the uh, record base and these attachments. So I'm just going to find all the things with the little eyes lit up, select them, and now hit combine. Okay, so that's all gone. Now I want to turn on the platform, and I need to find all the other pieces. If I had named them as I separated them, that would make it maybe a little bit less confusing, so I do apologize if that seemed confusing. But now, once again, I've got the platform, and I've got each object. I just select them, and now hit Combine. And for visual sake, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A to select everything, and I'm going to remove the face groups, clear them, Control Shift G. So now it's one solid gray color. And the same thing with the record base Control Shift A, Control Shift, or sorry, Control A, Control Shift G. So now I've got a record base, and I've got this. Okay? If you want to really change things up control G and now we've got a green and a silver and so now we've got everything we need we can print this object as you see if I bring this up and down it, it will snap right into these little holes it'll nestle right in there so you take that out first you take your custom impression you snap then you take this object you just snap it right in there and now you can also insert your bolt and you're able to screw this up and down until you have the right bite. But that's that leaves out one step. We now have everything in the lower, but what about the upper? This strike plate I brought in here because I wanted to have, you know, sort of a a basic place to start with, okay? Now, it might vary from case to case, but what I would do is I would now take the upper and I'm going to move it around and try to line it up with this. Okay. Now I need to move it, move the upper up a ways. Get this somewhat right in the middle of the teeth. So you have this nice big platform for that screw to kind of slide around on. Can probably even go a little bit farther down there. Hit OK. And now I'm going to click on the, the plate itself, and I'm going to trim it the same way we trimmed those other connectors. So plane cut, draw a line, fl flip that over, hit OK. Plane cut, draw a line, hit accept. And so now it's one, the denture and the, the plate can be combined. So the two things that are turned on, the, sta the strike plate and that, in fact, I'm going to turn the, I'm going to click that one first, that way the name remains here. 
So we have the upper try-in, we have the lower record base, and we have the platform. So we can export each one of these objects. You can also export the bolt, and you've got everything you need to work with. Okay. So a couple little things I want to point out. In your software, or in your download, you have a variety of pins. Okay. You have four different pins of diff varying lengths. That way, if you find that um, you need a much smaller one, or a much taller one, you have that option available to you. So they, I have, I believe, a 10, a 10 millimeter, or a, minute, a 15 millimeter, well, let me look, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So uh, this, the one that's included in here is the 15 millimeter. I don't think it's too often that you're going to need more than that. Um, uh, that I do want this a little bit high. I don't like. I don't really want a long distance because any sort of play you get in here is going to get magnified. So try to keep it. You know, I would rather raise the platform higher than to have a really long screw. So I wouldn't recommend using the 25, but I gave it as an option. And the other thing I'm including is it, this platform that is right here has a tolerance of um, of approximately. Ten, uh, four tenths of a millimeter. To allow the, the two objects to be printed and still be able to turn and be fairly tight, that is what I have found to be the best in my printer. Now, I've also included a platform that's just 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.5, because the screw itself is five millimeters. They, um, yeah, so these are the different uh, diameter offsets. So if you find you need a little more wiggle room, go to the 5.5. Five. If you print it, you test it, and you find it's too loose, go to the 5.3 or go to the 5.2. Your first print, you might just go ahead and, well, you don't want to do it five, four times, but you might just print those, these platforms out by themselves with one screw and just see which one gives you the best fit. You want it to be tight. And if you have to run it through once just to get it to thread and then go to the patient, that's fine. Um, but yeah, not, so you have your options. And so I believe that's about it with ev for everything that's included here. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Please uh, be sure to you know share cases that you've done so that we can all kind of learn together from this. Uh, I really think it sh it'll be helpful. Um, you know, it's something that I find the most frustrating part about removable um, is finding CR getting a patient to get into centric relation. And I know bi bilateral manipulation or manual manipulation, whatever, um, all these different tricks, uh, put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and swallow, all those kind of things. Um, but getting it repeatable, I struggle with. So the idea here being that, um, so a quick little, I mean, please look for videos online that can explain it better than I can. But the whole concept is if we turn the bolt, the platform, and the lower, the patient will be able to slide forward, do their excursive movements, and it's going to create an arrow shape. And the point of the arrow is centric relation. Okay, you, dr you make a little divot in that so that this can nestle in there. Now one little trick is to take some flowable composite, dab it right on here, make a little bead so that it's round, so that when you put carbon paper up there, it'll trace a line. And that way you can also take a round burr and this will z sink right into that hole that you find as being centric relation. It'll help your patients to find that. Again, look online for more videos about using gothic arch, trace, art, gothic arch tracing or um, centric bearing devices. And then one l final thing I wanted to mention, if you feel like this platform is too far back, remember, you can always come in here and you can go to edit, plane cut, and it will trim off part of it. Okay, something to consider. Not necessary, but when I first set it up, I meant to mention that, and I forgot to. So, anyway, hope this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye for now.